the sewers. This is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, and Darby. Bossa Nova! Bossa Nova? Chevy Nova? Excellent! Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Goodness gracious, we are, uh, we, we've got uh, so much uh, for all of our uh, listeners that uh, we are uh, foregoing our, our standard <laughs> month-long <laughs> uh, time frame between shows and uh, coming back to you with another episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. Uh, once again, uh, joining me are Darby and Alex. Guys, welcome back. Hello. Holla at your boys, up. son. <laughs> and wow. uh, we've you got... Ever, a... ever do that again, please. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen a lot. <laughs> Uh, we've got a uh an, a great episode for you guys oh alex and i recently had the the opportunity to speak with uh somebody who you may not know uh by name and uh in fact you may not know even uh his team's work uh but after this uh interview uh if you don't already you're going to want to know everything there is to know about this project. Uh, we got a chance to talk with Randall Lobb from the, uh, well, it's, it's currently called Turtle Power, which is a, a good name. Um, Turtle Power, the uh, definitive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles documentary. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's quite the interview, and uh, we look forward to sharing it with you uh, in just a few minutes. So, um, in addition, uh, we'll we'll have a uh, uh, more of our our standard uh, highlight of uh, of <laughs> topics. Uh, have our character spotlight, and uh... I think something very newsworthy has occurred this past week. Where if you go to the Turtlepedia Wikia page, Donatello has surpassed all the turtles in the which turtle is the more most popular poll. I think that is very newsworthy. Mm. He needs to be brought yeah. up, and documented. Thanks, Jason, right Bates there. For... Booyakasha! Get all up. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, that booyakasha long. button. Five minutes into the show. <laughs> Forget to do it early, so it's easy for editing. Yeah, appreciate Jason it. Jason Biggs uh, really gets you, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, um, not even, I'm not even going to get into pie conversation right now. <laughs> um, That's the uh, best conversation. <laughs> I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about some uh, some new uh, acquisition stuff. Um, uh, I've got a couple things I, I wanted to bring up. Uh, one, I, I just got in the mail the uh, Turtles uh, Classics Volume 4. Um, it's the IDW releasing, uh, I guess re-releasing, the, uh, the original Mirage uh, series uh, on... And uh, they've, you know, like I said, I believe I mentioned in the last episode, they've been kind of re- releasing them in kind of a, a weird order. They're kind of random. That's at least what it looks like if you just glance at it. But um, the so I just got that, which that's not really what I wanted to talk about, though. But um, fire. Uh, no, the, uh, the the biggest, and I, I'll call it an acquisition, but it's more of a reacquisition because. Uh, um, just recently went up to my, uh, my parents' house, um, and, uh, was able to get all the stuff, all my stuff out of their attic and, uh, brought it home and 
uh, included in that were all of my Ninja Turtles action figures. And uh, uh, it was my wife and I busted them out and uh, uh, here at, here at our, our new house and and uh, it was quite the trip down memory lane. Um, so I, I totally did not realize that uh, or remember, I guess, that uh, I was actually a charter member of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtle Force, which uh, was the the I guess the official fan club of the turtles. Um, uh, I've got uh, I got my my card in my little uh little certificate and and uh you get like uh, you got bandanas and uh, a little newsletter called the chaos the chaos chronicles i'm not quite sure why it's called the chaos chronicles but um yeah pretty wild stuff um uh, you know a bunch of action figures that uh i i couldn't remember uh, that i even had um and one of which was my inspiration for my character spotlight for today. So, uh, over hey, time, stop. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to, uh, send out some, some photos and, uh, is it ace duck? No, it's not ace duck. I, but I do have my ace duck. Uh, man, that was a, that was a cool action figure. It was. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was pretty, pretty cool. You know, I had all my vehicles, my turtle van, uh, still in great shape, uh, even though I played the heck out of that thing. Is that even the right term? I'm not sure. But um, you yeah. partied the heck out of that wagon. There you go. There you go. Um, so uh, that was my, I guess, quote unquote, new acquisition. Um, I have I have an acquisition that I need to ask people about. Okay. Oh, because I'm kind of upset slash curious if it's happening to anybody else. Okay. Is that all right? Hello? Yes. Yes, it's Okay. Fine. <laughs> okay. Nobody's responding. I don't know what's going on. So anyway, yeah, no one's even listening to me. Fair enough. Um, so I got a bunch of the new action figures uh, for the new series. And I've got the Krang figure. Yes. <clears throat> Am I the only one having trouble keeping it to stand up? Because no, the I've heard that problem. Legs don't move on this. They don't. Then they don't yeah. bend at the knee. Mm-hmm. Am I the only person having trouble with this? No, I don't think you are. I think I've heard other people have that same issue. Because um, it doesn't. And then I see pictures of people who have like rearranged their action figures and like poses. And there's no yeah. way the crank stands up by itself unless it's leaning against something. Yeah. They're cheating. They're yeah. photoshopping yeah. it or something. Photoshopping or gluing it down. Yeah, glue. Yeah, they'll, they'll glue them down. Um, yeah. I'm very yeah. upset with that. Yeah. In case you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 kind of disappointing because they have a whole department at one well, department. It may just be one guy, but um, you know, a quality. Um, department QA department that is supposed to do that kind of stuff to uh, check to make sure that they you know, are Can able stand. to stand up and everything. But Yeah, yeah it, it's it, all the other figures bend at the knee. Why, why not? Why not the crane? Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. Um, Alex, I know uh, that you just recently got a... Uh, a, a t-shirt in the mail and uh you have a story that you'd like to share with everybody i do uh we'll start with the, the t-shirt first uh it was um if you follow me on twitter um oh. you would have seen um the <laughs> the uh, images that i sent um it's a it's a mashup it was by rip t so it was only a 24-hour deal um but it's it's a, a teenage Mutant ninja turtles uh power rangers mashup and it's uh, it's pretty clever, I think. Anyway, uh, they um, it's the same kind of title as uh, as uh, the the, uh, the turtles. It's except it says um, Mighty Mutant Ninja or Mighty Mutant Power Turtles. That's what it yeah, says. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, the uh, the the turtles are dressed up 
like in Power Ranger suits, but in their corresponding colors. Right. So I just thought it was a kind of a cool mashup, and it was worth the you know the ten bucks from you know Rip T. I mean, it's they're cheap shirts. Uh, good quality though when I got it. So um, really good quality shirt. Uh, it. it and it fit me. That's a good thing. So, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I highly recommend people following Rip T on, um, on Twitter or, you know, kind of just on Facebook because they, uh, they put out some really awesome stuff and awesome mashups and, uh, they have done turtle ones in the past as well. So, uh, a lot of turtle ones. So, um, just kind of keep on that, uh, for the turtle fans and get like once in a lifetime kind of t-shirts, uh, that nobody else can have. Um, and, uh, the next thing, <laughs> the next item I know you're on, excited my, about on my list here, I'm very <laughs> excited. And, uh, I think, I mean, this is, this is the first time, you know, I, I, this is like, uh, this is like the first time, you know, <laughs> everybody just kind of reminisce right now for a second, first time. And now, um, I, I thought uh, this was a PG show. I can't do that on the air. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> The um, I, I as as some of you may know, I, I started a uh, a new career here recently, uh, and uh, it's I'm not going to name drop anything, but it's it's related to IT, and um, I was going, you know, the typical intro like, hey, my name's Alex, and I'm blah 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 blah. So um, I found it a good opportunity to say, hey, you know, I'm Alex, co-host of the Turtle Power Podcast. Well. One of my fellow co-workers is a listener. <laughs> Someone I didn't even know. First wow. fan meeting in the wild. Wow. Yep. yep. Um, his, uh, I'll, I'll give his first name because I, I, I didn't, I'm not sure if he's okay with the last, but his <laughs> name is Wes. And, uh, Explain, explain. No, 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 no. Now I have to hear about that. Like, well, did he just jump up immediately and was like, oh, my God, I listen to you? Or No, 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 no. Details. No. Yeah. Details. <laughs> I go through the introduction, and as I'm, I'm, I'm walking away into training, he, um, he tells me, he's like, dude, I listen to you guys. I actually – I listen to your podcast, and I'm just like um, – I, I didn't really know what to say. <laughs> so, I would have said no, you didn't. Nobody listens to it. <laughs> right. Well, I, I, Brian, prepare Booyakasha. I said, get the fuck out of here. Because <laughs> that's, I mean, I'm, I'm brand new. Booyakasha. Like, I just started this job. <laughs> and here's this, this guy this, who's, who's already tenured there. And I'm just telling him straight up, get the fuck out of here. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, it, it was it was amazing. Uh, you know, I got his, his favorite turtles, Michelangelo. So we got another Mikey fan. Um, I did not, and I am going to, I think, ask him who his favorite. Uh, but I, I'm afraid he's going to be biased with his answer. I hope not. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to ask him who his favorite um, yeah, actual show character, like uh, podcast character, is. So which personality? And um, you know, it's it was just it was just. Weird. I don't I mean, think you should ask him that. That'll that'll just start trouble on the show here. <laughs> no, I'm Wes's favorite. I'm Wes's favorite. No, Wes likes me Wes. Wes. <laughs> I got. He's probably, he would probably be biased anyway. But um, no, that's that's. I just that's thought it really, was. I mean, it, it was really the coolest cool. coolest damn thing ever. Like you know, I'm just waiting for little you know Asian girls to start running up to me and wanting my autograph now. That's the next step. Oh See, that's that's why I do the podcast. Like, that is my. <laughs> that is point. exactly why Darby does the show. <laughs> as as the only eligible bachelor on the show, yes. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but, no, that's that's uh, that's really, really cool. cool. That's really cool. Wes, thank you for listening. Um, so, wait, wait, wait. Did he say like how long he's been listening, or has he listened to all the episodes? What, how, okay, how so you? how how he how he came to um, how he came to actually find us? Like, I was curious because I asked him how he started listening to us because I was curious what media outlet was working. Well, he uh, started listening to us on accident, which um, I don't think is really a shocker to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he was actually um looking for uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle shows on iTunes and he accidentally had, um was in podcast he I mean he was just looking up some podcasts and he searched under podcasts and it came up. And uh he's like, Well, you know, why not? 
that. <laughs> and then he ended up liking the show. So um, I think that's that may have been the course that a lot of our listeners took. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, and you know, the accidental route, yes, right, yeah. And, and but if if oh, anything, man, I, I mean, thought that I thought this was the other turtle po- turtle podcast. Oh, whoops. <laughs> if anything, this this shows that if people are looking up for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on iTunes, uh, even if they're accidentally in the podcast section, we do show up. So that's a good thing, I guess. Well, that's, you a know? Thing. that's a good thing, and and uh, the fact that we're 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 showing consistency with our episodes for the most part, like we're not going, you know, sex, uh, sex, <laughs> six months. <laughs> As, as the uh, newly the, most, the newly recently, recently, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, the <laughs> most new, uh, new, uh, We're not new married that. member of the. Okay. We're not going like six months in between. So <laughs> you know, nobody wants to get into a into a show that uh, that's not going to be consistent. And man, whatever, I can't even focus now. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> No, that's 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 awesome. That's awesome. It's uh, it's good to see that uh, you know we're not just talking to each other. Uh, even though, uh, well, I was gonna say that that would be worth it anyway. But we'll see. <laughs> uh, it would wouldn't be wow. as worth. It. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, it, it's it's wonderful it. to hear that. Definitely yeah, that's... not worth getting up at nine thirty in the morning for. <laughs> <laughs> Our fans are listeners. We get up early. Just I, I meant just talking to you guys. Yeah. Oh no, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't get up at nine thirty. Talk to myself or talk to my wife. Dude, uh, I, so, I have a bad choice. Um, so yeah, yeah, thank you to to, us, really to like all of our listeners. Uh, we we know we've uh, you know we've corresponded with our uh, with uh, some of you out there uh, over Twitter and, and email and uh, but uh, it, it's, it's certainly uh, it, it, it's certainly shocking to to uh, and and enjoyable to be able to meet uh, our listeners face to face. So uh, you know maybe in uh, in the future at uh, some events maybe we can do that even more. So April O'Neil, Channel Three Eyewitness News. All right, let's get to, to uh, some news. Uh, there was a lot that just came out just this week uh, as recording this segment. Um, let, let's go through it uh, really quickly. Uh, uh, most of the news is, surrounds the upcoming movie. Um, the first bit of news is uh, our, our future Raphael uh, has decided to come uh, out with some comments uh, about the... The online persona, I guess, of the uh, the movie. Uh, he was at the MTV Movie Awards, um, and he was... Which, who really watches that anymore? <laughs> right. What self-respecting adult watches that anymore? Well... Uh, pretty pretty Spears probably, like, at home, like, staring at the TV, eating Cheetos. Are they going to talk self- about me? <laughs> self-respecting. Self-respecting. Oh, that's right. You did say self-respecting. My apologies. Hey, that. <laughs> um, Respect. Sometimes my English doesn't come across very well for you. I know. <laughs> ¿Qué, qué pasó, señor? <laughs> yeah. um, let's let's go ahead and play the uh, the audio here. Oh, please do. We are shooting. It's been an interesting process, you know, with this, the kind of technology we're working with, this live action motion capture thing. Um, there's just a lot of technology involved, so there's some kinks to work out. So we've had some trial runs. We've actually started shooting some. We're, we're also in this phase right now that's sort of developmental again. And uh, we've got to be ninjas, unfortunately for me, um, who can barely walk and talk at the same time. So um, we're, we're learning a lot of the fight choreography and that kind of thing. So we've got these unbelievable um, stunt trainers that uh, that work us every day to the bone and uh, it's been a, a great process so uh, we'll pick back up with principal photography soon and how do you think fans of the comic and the show will feel about this version the frustrating thing for me since I've signed on is, is you sort of hear that that it's already got a reputation this movie that hasn't come out yet you know I think people assume that they know what it's gonna be about and those people are wrong the assumptions all everything you read online is wrong and and it's frustrating because you want to just you know you want to tell everybody like how great it is and 
and you can't really say why, but it is. And uh, it's so much better than people think, and I promise that. And it's going to look way better than anybody can imagine. I can't wait for people to see this. I think it's going to live up to and exceed everybody's boyhood dreams of being a Ninja Turtle like I was. You know, um, I grew up with it too, and I want to see it come to life in the best way possible. And it's been really cool to be a part of and see it start to come to life, and I can't wait for people to see it. What is it like technically? Is it motion capture suits or yeah, we're, green? we're it's it's live action motion capture. So like we're we're running around Manhattan, you know, me and Megan Fox, her looking wonderful, and me looking like an, uh, some kind of ant with uh, cameras all over my face and dots, and um, it's ridiculous and it's it sucks running around with that kind of stuff on in public, but uh, it's what we must do. So um, it's it's just it's it's a lot of fun though to be a part of that kind of process and. Um, to bring a character like that to life in a very different way, um, you know, as an actor, it's challenging and fun. But uh, but uh, yeah, it's 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 all very live action, you know. So it's just like shooting a regular movie, you know. This is talking to the HollywoodReporter.com. Uh, let, let me let me stop you for just one okay. second, okay? Um, because it, in the interview, he's like, "Oh yeah, I was this huge TMNT fan." <sighs> And he says, since he signed on, he's been hearing all this negative publicity. Let me tell you something, buddy. Way before you signed on, there was negative publicity. Mm-hmm. So don't try to bring this crap now. Think, oh, I'm a team and fan. Look, I'm, you know what? No, I'm not going to do it. No. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know what color headband he's going to be wearing. <laughs> I think I'm green. <laughs> Stupid heads. He said, uh, we're running around Manhattan, me and Megan Fox, her looking wonderful, and ah, me looking like listen, some kind of ant with cameras all over my face. Him uh, sounding like somebody who wants to get with Megan Fox. <laughs> he already did, man. Come on. He's already got the clap. You know it. <laughs> anyway, so the only thing, I mean, of course, I'm always trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but... The only thing as to how this could be great is if they really did chop up that script and and go from scratch. But yeah, and yeah. they may have, and they may have. It, right. If they're working off that old script, though, um, no, it's gonna be crap. Yeah. And and it really frustrates me that you know <laughs> it, it's gonna be live action CGI and they decided to go with these guys when they could have clearly gone with guys who are trained, you know, in martial arts. I know. God forbid you hire Ernie Reyes back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Right. Uh, we, so, yeah, we haven't, uh, at least I haven't read anything about what kind of, uh, or what, what stunt, uh, choreography, uh, group or anything like that. What, um, what fighting, uh, group is, is, is working on this movie. So, Michael Bay probably picked out a couple kids from the local karate club. <laughs> stopped us uh, <laughs> on the way. We stopped at a uh, little uh, martial arts uh, school outside of a uh, <laughs> grocery store. <laughs> Lured in the kids with candy. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, um, man. Uh, so next bit of news um, that came out was that uh, Splinter has been cast. So uh, we'll uh, try to tread lightly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was not what I meant. Uh, Danny oh, Woodburn, um, who uh, y- you've <laughs> probably seen on TV before. Uh, he was on uh, He was Seinfeld. great in the Burger King commercials. Oh, my God. The Burger King commercials? Oh God. Yeah. That's so stacker. right. The stacker commercials. He was the he was the foreman in the stacker commercials. Oh my gosh! Oh meat and my. cheese, meat and cheese, no veggies. <laughs> oh my! I am YouTubing. I completely forgot about that. Thank you for making my life relevant again. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the last thing that we saw him in was uh, Mirror Mirror. Yeah, we did see that movie. Uh, it was one that uh, my wife I was, and I... <laughs> I was going to say, don't, don't speak for all of us, buddy. Okay. <laughs> no, it was my... I have no idea what movie you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jessica and I went and uh, saw the movie with my parents because that was one that my mom wanted to see. And uh, sure. that, that led to Jessica's first uh, blog about uh, how terrible movies can possibly be. 
um, is bash the trash or something like that. So, uh, yeah. Um, if you haven't, if you don't know, uh, Danny is a, a little person. Um, and he's I, great. He's, he's really Oh, he's great. a very good actor. He's, he's a very good actor. Um, you know, if, if, if anyone is going to get, if, if they were trying to find a little person for this role, then he would definitely be at the top of the list. Um, <laughs> no, nah, he's number two on the list for me. If I was going to cast a little person in the role, I'm sorry, he's number two. Who's number behind, one? Yeah. I'm going to ask. Yeah, you don't. Do- <laughs> <Dinklage>, obviously. <laughs> Peter Dinklage? Hello? Anyone? No name. No, no one recognizes that name. No. You guys don't watch Game of Thrones at all? N- no. Oh, oh. No, I don't. Of course. Of course. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He'd be great. And he's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> quite the he was a guy. He's quite the suave Booyakashar, if you know oh, what I mean. He, he, he definitely is. He, I mean, he he is the um, the Robert Downey Jr. version of a little person. Not that exactly. there are any different from us. Outstanding. Well, I just think it's weird, though, because, like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I was thinking about this when they when they cast uh, Danny Woodburn as Splinter. You know, the, the original, you know, Splinter, Kevin Clash has a very deep and sort of memorable voice. In TMNT, they had Mako as Splinter, and I, I just don't know where Danny Woodburn's coming well, in with no. this. And, here's and, the- and, you're, and you're right, even with Peter Dinklage, his voice would would fit a lot better. Now, uh, it's funny you bring that up. Um, uh, Lewis, uh, one of our big fans, uh, the, at the Lewis guy, uh, he actually... Uh, wrote us and uh said i hope they get somebody else to do the voice uh or hope he has an amazing range of character voices because yeah i mean he's not known for doing voices he's he's a he's an actor but he's not a voice actor um so and and just the concept of why they would uh you know cast a little person for the role of splinter i i I don't really understand um, am I the only one that sees a problem with this? Because I'm I'm just seeing Yoda. I'm seeing like a Yoda ripoff in this entire thing. Short little guy who carries a cane who can, when he needs to, just kick everybody's ass in a fight. Yeah. Wow, I didn't think about that. That's uh, it's that's very interesting. Yeah. It's, that's a, that's. I mean, that's 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 the only sound theory. I've heard so that's that, that's a pretty good yeah that's probably what's gonna happen very good Darm. that's all I mean I, I'm just seeing a Yoda ripoff blatant blatant Yoda ripoff in this one yeah, it might be. that's the route it's the only thing that so far that has made any sense yep. uh, as to why that that this casting would have been made but um, like everything else with this movie we'll see uh, last bit of news with regards to the movie is now if you go online today, uh, everyone online is is giving reference to uh, TMNTLayer.com for breaking the story. However, uh, if uh, this is why you need to follow our Twitter, uh, folks, because we actually reported on this two days before uh, TMNTLayer.com uh, reported this. So um, this actually so might be true, else we're just horrible. <laughs> we, this actually was reported originally by uh, ComingSoon.net. Um, this was uh, out of a. Uh, it was ComingSoon.net, wasn't it? Yeah, ComingSoon.net. It was. It was out of uh, CinemaCon. Um, Paramount had a presentation where they talked about their upcoming movies: uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, World War Z, and they also had. Uh, this was during a montage. They had Transformers Four a movie called Interstellar, and they had a logo, which we don't have a v- picture of it, unfortunately, of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, So, which offers up the idea nope, that... I already know where I'm going with it. I already know where I'm going with this. Well, so. it offers up the idea that the title has been changed to include the Teenage Mutant, which also leads me to believe... That yes, in fact, they did totally change the script because that means that there's an emphasis on the fact that they're teenagers again and they're mutants again, not 
what well, we read. Well, here's in the... the thing. Here's here's my stance. Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna stop you right there. We <laughs> we went over the entire script. Yeah. Okay, the old one. Yes. They could be teenagers. Whatever. What did what did the what did the fifth or sixth or seventh turtle tell them? Oh, the mutagen was a cover up. Right. The fact that you're mutants is a cover up. Just so because you, you think... name it Teenage Mutant Ninja, da, 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 da. just because you name it that doesn't mean they're still not going to go that route. <laughs> okay, so you're thinking that this is all a kind of like a cover up, or to try to make fans. Oh, yeah, in the movie, in the movie, they're just going to be like, "Oh, you're not. Uh, oh, it's just a cover." By the way, you're also 37 years old. You're not teenagers. <laughs> That's also a cover up. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Alex, got I have any, nothing to uh... add. Uh, I, I I agree with Dar. Harvey, one hundred percent. I think. Wow. Uh, I think they were getting so much negative media um, towards it that they felt compelled to. I mean, it's just. I mean, it's just. It's as simple as simple. Something as simple as a name change can change someone's perspective. Oh, that's and, true. Yeah. Now, now. I mean, the majority of the masses are like, oh, so he, he might be getting it. He might be actually getting it. And that that's what he does. He dangles a carrot in front of us, you know, and then. Uh, and then he like, snatches, he pulls it away. This is right away. This is going to ruin my hashtag, though, because <laughs> if it's TMNT related, I do hashtag TMNT. If it's uh, Nick Turtles related, I do hashtag Nick Turtles. If it's the movie related, then I do hashtag Ninja Turtles. So just do hashtag Alien Turtles or Bay Turtles Ooh. or My Childhood Is Dead Turtles. Oh, jeez. <laughs> or a Hitler no, turtles. No. There's, there's a big thing. Uh, there's a big saying. Everyone knows it. First impressions are everything. Yeah. And the first impression we got was a while ago. And it still leads a bad. It leaves such a bad taste in our mouth that even when Raphael's like, they think they know what they're talking about, but they're wrong. No, dude. We were more involved with this movie before you signed on to it. Yeah. yeah. All right. We know more about what's going on than you do. Okay, you know what? After a few weeks of, you know, shooting the movie, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll be like, okay, he obviously knows more about it than we do. But as of right now, he's only been involved for a couple weeks. We've been involved for over a year on yeah. this. Yeah, that's true. Wow. But he's like that teenager who had sex for the first time and thinks he's a pro. <laughs> yeah. Um, buddy, you yeah. still can't hit the right hole, so shut up. <laughs> I love you, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's move on. Uh, that's all the, uh, the the movie news we've got this uh, this episode. Um, yeah, really quick into the realm of the comics. Uh, we've got recent releases of uh, IDW's uh, in their micro series uh, series. They're all single issues, so I don't know how they call them micro series. They're just one offs. But um, their Kring uh, micro series number one uh, has recently been released. Uh, that's available digitally and uh, hard copy. Um, uh, only on hard copy is a uh, re release of Mirage's uh, issue number 50, um, which uh, is in the, what's called the Treasury Edition. And. Uh, so that's available. Um, I, I got to admit, I th- I'm pretty sure that's going to be released anyway in their in their upcoming releases of the the collected volumes. Um, but this is just a one off, like l- limited edition. Um, but anyway, uh, in, and lastly, uh, Archie um, Adventures Volume Four. Uh, that series has been uh, slowly uh, re released. Uh, volume Four includes issues. 13, 16, and 18. And again, I don't understand why they do certain issues and not others. And I'm a little upset that they didn't include issue 17 because the cover of issue 17 is one of my favorites. It is, in fact, uh, unplanned uh, with regards to the timing of this um, news release is that that's actually my wallpaper on my phone is is the uh, cover to issue 17. Um, It's the issue with uh, uh, it's got the four turtles. They're riding on the back of like this giant sea turtle. Um, Leonardo's got like some some like seaweed that's kind of like wrapped around the the big sea turtle's mouth 
and they're all kind of like writing on it and uh Raphael doesn't have his mask on he's just got his black wrestling pants on he's got his sigh yeah. out so they're looking yeah, with all the black like leather pants with you man <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're so they're all looking like you know charge and then michelangelo and donatella look like they're scared out of their mind but um yeah so at least I mean, they're not wearing leather chaps okay at least <laughs> they're not chaps they're wrestling pants you know you know about wrestling pants okay buddy i know you know about wrestling pants so yeah don't try to pull that Stuff. Yeah, but black leather ones. They're not ones. leather. No one said yeah. they're leather. Yeah, they kind of are. Oh, jeez. Uh, so and anyway, back, those are all out. Even, even even after they got off the turtles' back, I believe, and they all went back to their bandanas. Raffle loved his flashy pants so much he kept them. No, I uh, believe in issue uh, uh, nineteen. That's when because in eighteen, I believe that's the one with Mondo Gecko. Where Mondo Gecko is introduced, and uh, in 19, I believe that's when the turtles get their bandanas back. It's either 19 or 20, but yeah, and the the, the uh, artist changes up right then too. You can tell there's a big change in the art style. But uh, so anyway, that's all out right now. But uh, I think the biggest news that we want to talk about uh, this episode is the the iOS game uh, yeah. that is. Yeah, and uh, Alex Alex has a lot to talk about with regards to this. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Rooftop Run for iOS. Uh, it's uh, available now. Uh, within the first day, it was the highest uh, ranked, highest selling iOS game in, I believe, in America. I, uh, maybe the world. I'm not sure. No, it but wasn't the highest America. rated. That's true. No, not the highest rated. <laughs> it was the highest not selling. Not shot on that one. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, uh, Darby, have you played it? I have. I, yeah. I downloaded it earlier today in preparation for the podcast. Okay. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I, I'm stuck playing it on my little iPhone four. I don't have the uh, I don't have the luxury of playing it on an actual iPad or something like that. No, but. and I'm the same way. I'm on the four. Uh, Alex, you have it on the five, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Alex sounds like he's really got something to say about this game. So uh, <laughs> let, let's oh, no. let's just let's kind of just describe it quickly. Um, it's a running game. Uh, I'm not quite sure <laughs> what genre it is. It's it's not like if you're, it's if a you're, side-scrolling like rooftop running. Game, it's called rooftop it's run. Side, Very it, good. It, it's not even side-scrolling. It's just it's an endless <laughs> game. It's an endless yes. level. One it, but, level, the turtle runs automatically. You press buttons when to jump. Yes, but it's not one level, uh, and that's where I was kind of confused at first too. Oh, and and so it's not like Temple Run where you're running straight and you're turning left yeah. or right. It's you're side always scroll. running to the right. Yeah, so it is side scrolling. You can jump up and down, but your character is kind of always moving to the right. Um, you can also run along walls. Yes. Uh, and I didn't know there was a second level until I was looking at Alex, until I was looking at your um, your achievements or trophies or whatever the hell they call them um, on iOS and Game Center. Uh, that there was a second level. I was, that there were three levels, in fact. And not um, no. really level. Yeah. So no. explain how you do it's, that. It's, explain it's, how you get to the second level. Yeah. Well, okay. So I don't believe it's there. Your your <laughs> your um, villains that you face at first are the foot, and you have a meter on the uh, on the top of the screen, and you're collecting these orbs. Okay. Now you have to fill that meter up. Once you fill that meter up, you go into this close combat combo phase where you have to tap on the um, on the screen, and you'll, you'll have indicators that say tap tap tap, and you just tap them as fast as you can, and you create this this uh, this set of combos. Once you complete that set of combos, then you go to the next villains, which uh, the next villains were... Um, uh, they're like know, aliens pretty, or something. Yeah, they're aliens, flies. I don't know yeah, if that's... Yeah, they're mutants. That's, they're some sort of mutants. Right. And I'm not sure if that's if that's steering to uh, Baxter's... I don't know where, that, where they're going with that. Yeah, I, I don't think. know. They're, they're, yeah, they don't, they're nothing from the show, at least that we haven't seen yet. 
Now, it is interesting that the release of this game, though, did come right after that episode showed with the uh, with the Krang UFO that was trying to zap them. Right. That's exactly what the game whole exactly. premise is, is that that yeah. is chasing you. So that is actually some great marketing uh, huh. by Nintendo, that they were able to actually release, coincide the, the release of that episode with the game. Very good. Yep. Um, and then and then you uh, and then there's um, the Krang afterwards. Uh, oh, Krang is the Krang are in, in the third. OK, right. And that's as far as I've gotten. I think um, that's all there is. I think there's just three. Is there? I think so. The one thing with these games is that they grow. I mean, they're great for, you know, if you're in the crapper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very true. But, but it's not something that I'm going to, you know, sit down and, and want to play every day, all day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even though it seems that way. It I, is I'm addicting. Just, I really am on a crapper a lot throughout the day. <laughs> it is addicting, though, once you get into it. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, w- before we move on, though, I just want to clarify something. Those orbs are just throughout the environment. They're like coins in in mario they're just well, they also of, keep they also make your meter go back up before right the alien ship okay so you. right mm-hmm. the way you quote unquote die there's multiple ways one if that meter runs out that means that the ufo catches up to you and and you die uh you can also fall down um you know in between Buildings. rooftops and you die um i think well technically those are the only two ways but in addition, you mentioned uh, you know you're fighting all these different guys. Um, when you when you do that, you get coins, and the coins the only thing the coins are used for are for upgrades, um, upgrades that you use outside of while you're playing. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that the whole way you you continue moving on through the game is you got to get those orbs. Once you get enough orbs, it fills up the meter, like you said. You do the little mini game, and then you move on. You have to get a certain percentage correct in the mini game, though, because if you don't, uh, it'll spit you back out, and you got to try to fill up the uh, the the meter again. So, okay. Um, by the way, when it starts off, you actually get a little a little uh, mini uh, motion comic, if you will, and it does have all of the voice talent from the from the show as well. So, yep. Um, <clears throat> You only get to pick one turtle at the beginning, and the one that you pick is the only <laughs> character you can use until you make you get enough coins. And what turtle is that? More and I don't mind that at all, but yeah, I, I think and what turtle is that? What turtle? That works out really well, what mainly turtle? because I, what it's Leonardo. I, well, yeah, so. Alex picked Leo. I picked Donnie, and I know you picked Raph. Like obviously, of course, of course. Okay, so uh, you run with Mikey. I'm just going to usurp you as the guy who runs this podcast because you obviously don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, now uh, I should mention also that those coins, if you don't want to wait, you can actually purchase more coins uh, with real yeah. money. Yes, yeah. which is a, a thing that all games are doing nowadays. If you want to, you know, same thing on console games. If you want to buy every upgrade, then you can do that. You know, they actually have a way to. <laughs> I mean, the coins here are kind of are kind of ridiculous. Um, you can buy thirty six hundred for a dollar, uh, which will get ten- you one turtle. Yes. Uh, it, you Isn't that how many much coins it takes on a new one? Yes. Yep. Yep. 10500 for $4, which, uh, let me do my math. Uh, that's a terrible idea. Um, you should just do the <laughs> four times uh, 3600 That is more than 10500 So, um, So if you're going to buy coins, do the dollar ones. Um, this goes all the way up to you can actually buy... Uh, 180,000 coins, which I assume is unlock everything in the game. That did you do your math on that one? Uh, I did not do the math on that one. That is an assumption. Uh, that'll cost you only $49.99. So, yeah, which, which don't, I mean, no, don't do that. Don't don't, do that. Just don't. don't Um, I have an issue with the with the with the. I mean, I guess the game is not that bad as far as being a dollar ninety nine price point. No, Um, no, the game itself for a dollar ninety nine is is a good price point. 
And and if you'd go through it right. and you just right. you earn the coins while you run, uh, you can get the upgrades. So upgrades, they've got boosts, gadgets, gear, and weapons. Uh, they're all pretty uh, self-explanatory. <clears throat> I would suggest going buying the boosts first. Uh, you can each boost is unlocked after you purchase the previous boost, um, but that is what is going to have you be able to uh, get those coins faster. Um, mm. You're going to be able to so the, the boosts are impact recovery, damage combat energy and coins so um i would gotta suggest spend going money to make that. money so right. exactly exactly yep uh so i would suggest doing that now i don't know have you guys unlocked an additional turtle yet um nope. i don't care to um you want dog pound don't you i do want dog pound i yeah. actually that's 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 one of the issues I have is is the the overall character selection. I, I'm I'm hoping they add more. Um, but so what's you got to say? What what's the what's the caveat about Dog Pound? What why is it that you can't just unlock Dog Pound just like any other turtle? Because he's worth like all four turtles put together, probably yeah. more. Thirty six hundred for each turtle. Twenty eight thousand five hundred. Yes, twenty eight thousand five hundred. So. Um, so He's yeah, that one's going to take a while. <laughs> but, but you know, like you're better uh, off like, just like jacking up one, one turtle and then just playing with it instead of just instead of unlocking all four turtles, like just jack up your favorite one and then just go from there. Well, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And, and eventually, uh, you know, once I get that one jacked up, I'll just start buying turtles, I guess. But um, well, that's what I wasn't sure about is if those upgrades would go across turtles. I doubt it. They're probably no. turtle specific. So. Um, no, because well, yeah, they yeah are, because how are they going to make money Leo, from people buying coins? Um, you know, right. And, and for Leo, like you have like you can upgrade the weapons, and like I could get cyber katanas and then stealth swords. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be different as you go down. It, all the turtles are like that. Like Donnie's are the cyber bow or the stealth bow, and it's like right. okay, right. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, I think we've pretty much touched on all of the. Uh, kind of characteristics of the game uh what would you can you compare it to anything else that was actually something that i found impressive is that this is a game that i haven't really played before it's it's quite different it's just tapping you, you tap anywhere on the screen it doesn't matter it's just a timing and you can do like combo like double taps mm -hmm. but um there, there's there, there is strategy involved um, with with depending on where you want to double jump or do a normal jump and and stuff like that, or whether you want to oh, jump and, over and bad guys or, or actually too. fight them, but I I don't have anything to compare it to though. So no, no, I do like the addition of uh, of the pizza. Uh, ah, the yes, game. mention talk about the pizza. What does the pizza is, do? The, well, the pizza the pizza is uh, so uh, scattered throughout the, the the game through throughout the level. Um, typically, they're in hard to get areas but um uh, there's little slices of pizza and you want to collect as many as you can cuz when you uh, when you do die and you will um <laughs> many times you, right um it'll get you spins at the end uh, and there's just one this just this big pizza in each slice that either has additional coins that you can earn mm -hmm. um or has uh, special like power ups yeah as the gadgets you know, it's or the gadgets, gadgets that you can purchase right. they have them you can win them for free and and there's some that that there's there's a slice that'll allow you, allow you to continue, mm -hmm. so you actually won't. Uh, you can continue on your run, um, so they're good. I mean, if you see them, I mean, and you can get them, get them because uh, they'll uh, they're definitely helpful. And I mean, if you die, at least maybe you can get a, a few extra coins out of it, or uh, I don't know something. But that aspect reminded me of Jetpack Joyride. I don't know if you guys yes, played that. Yes, very game. much so. Yeah. Very so, much so. Uh, those those pizzas though are hard to find if you, if you don't know exactly where they are. Most of the time, when I get them, it's just by accident. Um, yeah, there's so. one in the beginning. If you double jump on that platform, uh, which like, I can't even figure out how to do. I know there's a platform right at the beginning. I don't know how to get up to it. It, it looks like you can't make it, but you can. Hmm. You just got to double jump it. Just have yeah. faith. <laughs> Space Jam. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, okay, so. Let's talk about some of the issues, though. And 
the issues um, – there's been a lot of reports of crashing out there. Uh, I haven't had it crash on me. Um, it says right in the description that it's not for – original iPad or some of the older iPods um, or the, some of the original iPhones. Yep. Um, like, I tried it on my iPad one, and it did crash. Uh, but Everything I had already read that, now. so, but, yeah, I knew it wasn't it And wasn't the people, the people it. complaining about it are these morons who don't read that. Probably. Probably. Um, it, you got to imagine, because, yeah, it, it, it's never crashed once on my phone, on my yeah. iPhone 4. Now I, I, I urge everybody because they have a, a three star rating on i on, on at the app store right now three out of five, which is just not accurate at all. No, no, it is it, like we said. It is a it is a good game. Um, it is challenging. I mean, maybe that's part of it too. Is that people are maybe used to games being too easy nowadays? But it is challenging when you first start. Like I I was dead in a matter of seconds. Because I didn't know what was going on. There's no instructions, really. You just kind of have to learn as you play. So, um, but it is a good game. It is, like, it is very addicting. Yeah. It, it is. It is. And they did a pretty good job with it. I mean, it's a, hey, you know what? I don't really care. I, I finally, finally have a TMNT game on my, I'm on my mobile device. That's really all I really care about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's been, it's been a long time coming. I wish, I wish it was, it was a fighter. I really wanted it to be a fighter, but that's okay. Um, I do have an issue with the character selection so far. I, I'm going to mention it again because it's really, really bugging me, and that's the biggest thing. That, it's like they do it on purpose, man. Um, yeah, I'd so, probably have an issue if I picked Leo, too. Well, no, <laughs> that, no, Leo is great. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, like, additional characters outside of the Four Turtles. Like, you'd think you would have gotten, I don't know, like, maybe Splinter um, or, I mean, Dog Pound. Is not a but I just want more. I want Leatherhead. I want April. I want Leatherhead. I want Splinter. Um, you know, I want Leatherhead. I want, <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. No, I, I, I think that that will probably happen, that there will be some mm. updates. I'd imagine so. Yeah. Uh, you can go to, um, if you go on Facebook, you can actually uh, search for Kung Fu Factory. That's actually the developer of this game. Uh, they have not been getting a lot of uh, recognition. Um, like, if you go on iTunes, it doesn't mention them at all on here. Um, you kind of have to do some, uh, some, some research to figure out uh, who actually made this game. Uh, you know, Nickelodeon, Viacom, they're just the developer, or they're just the, the publisher. Uh, it does down, I mean, you got to go way down. It does say developed by Kung Fu Factory on there. Sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, go on Kung Fu Factory's, uh, Facebook page and just, uh, let them know, let them know that you like the game, let them know what you don't like about the game. Um, so, uh, now I, like we said, I don't have any problems with crashing, but, uh, on my iPhone four, I am having some serious issues with frame rate. Um, and in a game where it's all about timing uh, frame rate issues are no bueno. Um, now, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Alex, because I know you're running on a five. Are you running into any frame rate issues? Not at all. Interesting. Okay. And it's really more in level two. Um, I don't know if it's just because there's more going on in the scene, but uh, it definitely uh impacts gameplay <laughs> um it's it yeah, gets it gets quite tough um to to try to successfully play in and especially in level two where it's just uh the frame rate drops out so bad that you you know it just it'll just warp ahead and all of a sudden you're you've died so um hmm. that's that's the issue that I've been running into, so I don't know if that's something that they can fix on their end or not but um hopefully hopefully because like i said i do really enjoy the game so um uh darby have you been experiencing any of this at all yeah the frame rate situation you're talking about yeah just it's horrible that's why i haven't gotten that's why i didn't believe there was a first level i mean there was a second level because it's literally just all right i'm gonna time the jump now and then it just starts skipping or going really slow and then i jump 
and I I land in between two buildings and I die. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as strategy, um, the only strategy I can give to players tap. is to uh, <laughs> really go for the day. Yeah, make sure you tap. Uh, and make sure you go for those green orbs. Uh, every single one counts. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it may, it, when I first started, it seemed very easy to just kind of, uh, just keep trying to run, not really focusing on the orbs, but, uh, you're not going to go anywhere, um, without those orbs. Um, so really focus on trying to get as many of those as you can. Because that's what's actually going to get you progressing through the game. Um, and then, like I said, also um, using those coins to do those uh, those upgrades. So, uh, Alex, you got anything strategy-wise? Um, yeah. Uh, Play it on a current uh, device with the current software, morons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, it's not uh, software. No, no. I mean, it, it's, it's not, it's not software. Uh, it's it's hardware, because you know what or, the the five has versus the four. You know, under the hood. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, it's it's software. It's software related too, because you you got uh, the, like the original iPad. It's still it's it's not current on, on, on iOS. Oh, six. okay, okay, yes. Um, no, that's true. That's true. But I, I mean, as far as the iOS uh, goes, I have the most update iOS on the phone. But it's it's I think it's yeah. just the hardware underneath that that's what's causing the frame rate issues. In, in certain cases, yes. I mean, yeah. there's not much strategy really involved with this game. Get the green orbs, get pizza if you can, um, and don't die. <laughs> uh, these are words to live by, not only for the game but in real life. So I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> um, okay. And tap. Uh, and tap. tap, tap. I mean, if anything, your girlfriend will appreciate it later. Learn how to tap. <laughs> All right, guys, let's let's get into th- this interview. Um, I- I'm l- really looking forward to sharing it with everybody. Um, as I said, uh, this interview was with Randall Lobb. He is from. Uh, the uh, the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, documentary um, that's still in production and uh, yeah let's go to the interview right now all right so uh, let's get started um, uh, joining us on the Turtle Power podcast is a uh, a guest that we've been looking forward to talking to for a while here um, uh, got me and and Alex uh, on the line with. Randall Lobb. Randall, right. how you, you doing? Do. You have Randall Lobb. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for, uh, for those who may not know uh, exactly who you are, why, why do we have you here on the podcast? Well, as uh, a long time, uh, I would call myself uh, a member of the FBI's Witness Protection Program. <laughs> Uh, you, you have me here because I'm one of a very small team of guys making a documentary on the history of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That is, there are a small group of us. Th- there I'm are loud. Yeah, I'm our loud spokesperson. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, and uh, I could kind of uh, tell from the uh, from the Chasing Turtles videos that. Uh, you, you... Oh you... <laughs> yes, That's, I realize now. Yes, um... that's my fault. <laughs> uh these uh these uh chasing uh turtles uh podcast videos video casts uh video podcasts if you will um that you guys have been uh putting together documenting the documentary or documenting the the, the creation of the documentary are, it, it is a documentary of a documentary you're it, right it, it is and yeah. uh it is they are fantastic um oh good yeah, no, very entertaining. And uh, if the if the purpose of them is to get people to be interested in watching the documentary itself, uh, I'd say mission accomplished. So uh, I I'm pleased to hear that. You know, when we when we started this process, uh, one of the things that we didn't know uh, and you never know is where where your audience is. Like we know there are a lot of turtle fans out there. 
And we know that there are a lot of people who are casual, like, in fact, I would say millions of casual turtle fans. So you, you're never too sure uh, who's going to want to watch what you do. And so when you say that, that makes me feel relieved. <laughs> I got to say. Well, I, I got to say as well that um, aside from just, you know, revamping and just getting me excited about uh, about the turtles, it also got me excited about a little place called the Cactus Taqueria. Uh, that I, I really want to visit now. <laughs> yeah, when uh, we uh, make it up. Listen, um, you just seem to love it so much. And this and... is not a joke. <laughs> it is, it is uh, when, when we go to L.A., it, I mean, I will drive stupid distance to go to this place. <laughs> we'll be in a, we, I'll give you a really good example. Uh, <clears throat> we found it by luck. I mean, if you... I, I go to a place. I, I, I was new to L.A. when we um, when we went there in 2009 to uh, shoot inter- our first interview with Kevin. And uh, when we got to know Kevin, and I guess I'd been there in 93 or something like that just for a whole separate thing. And, and I really didn't spend a lot of time. And I had been there another time as a, just a in and out doing some work for somebody. So I'd never driven around and, you know, been able to find my way around town. So mm-hmm. I did some Googling and I read about this place and it was actually close to the golden apples comic store. Oh. And yeah. And Kevin was doing a signing there and this uh, 25th anniversary turtle bus was there. So I said to the guys, you know, there's this Mexican little spot just down the road from here. Let's, let's go check it out. And we went there and we got a burrito that, I mean, I'm from Canada and, you know, you can get a burrito, the odd place, uh, <laughs> nothing like this. We ate them and I just about started crying. A guy was <laughs> touched by the burrito. <laughs> and so, you know, as recently as I was just down there uh, this past month and uh, oh, wow. I, was, I was, yeah, I was staying somewhere else. And uh, I was driving all across town to get there. And, of course, you know, you're lining up with people who probably live nearby. And then I said to some guy, man, I drove a long way for this. And he said, I came over the hills. Like, same thing. Oh, it's, wow. Yeah, it's really good. And probably there are 100 places like it within, you know, three miles. <laughs> there's some about this place. Oh yeah, no, you definitely I have. Probably uh, they should give me free free stuff now that. Well, I mean, I've, you're, you're turning place. others into into fans, uh, and, and <laughs> the uh, the free advertising they're getting, they have no idea. So they, they absolutely have no idea. I don't think they spend a lot of time thinking about me. It's cruel. <laughs> so I think about them so often. But hey, this is not the Taco Cast, or. Just wait, is it? <laughs> uh, not yet. We haven't gotten there yet. A um, uh, lot of oh. turtle news uh, going on lately. So. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no, no, we, uh, uh, we do uh, have you on to talk about uh, Turtle Power. That's, the, that's actually the name of the documentary, which – but- it is a good Let's name. Let's call it a working title. Let's oh, really? Okay. Well, okay. I, I all being well, that's the title. But who knows? Who knows? Okay. Well, I, right? we there approve of that the, the name that stop you power. from doing what you're going to do. And, <laughs> yeah. You're not um, going to sue me. No, I don't. No, well, I don't. I don't think. We, I don't think so. No. I, <laughs> we'll I, see I, how I, the I, see how the interview cur- turns out. So. No, that'll be that will be grounds. No, we we've, we've called it uh, Turtle Power: A Definitive History of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And uh, I've liked that title for a long time. And uh, you know, again, all being well, we'll keep it. But I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's possible, and and I don't obviously I don't know one way or another. But you know, we've talked to different people who may be interested in the documentary. You know, companies that we would like to help us to get it out there, or you know, to some degree, come up with some kind of distribution structure or whatever. Mm-hmm. And if and if a company that made an arrangement with us said, you know what, we don't like the title, I, it's it's not a deal I certainly breaker. Wouldn't fight for it. Like yeah. I would. I would be, yeah, it's, I'm not going to fight about something like that. If somebody knows something that I don't know, I'm always going to listen. You know, I'm not one of these guys that argues for no reason. Yeah, so, and yeah. I think that's pretty common in the uh, in, in, in in these types of independent films, especially like documentaries that um, yeah. 
a friend of mine, uh, or actually two guys, were in a uh, were in a film in a documentary, and uh, it was the same thing. They had a working title, and then by the time it came out, it, the name had changed. But yeah, and again, it, I can't even predict why it might be like that. So uh, right. I'll tell you right now, I like that title, and that's the title until it's not. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, um, so. When whenever we have uh, guests on, we always like to it's sort of an icebreaker uh, to to give uh, our guests what we affectionately call the Great Turtle Power Podcast Questionnaire. Okay. So, uh, right. the first question is: uh, How did you become a a TMNT fan? Okay. Well, you are going to tr- you're going to take my man card here as a turtle fan. Uh, <laughs> when? When we started this documentary, it was November 2008, the guy who started us on this path is a young guy named Isaac Elliott Fisher, mm-hmm. and he's a, like a lifer turtle fan. And yeah, I, he, I am an old man, and so <laughs> when, the, when the Turtles first came out, I was buying comics. I was a comics collector, and I was in university. And I saw Turtle One, TMNT One, yeah. sitting on the shelf, and it was oversized, so it couldn't sit in the stacks. And I thought it was a gimmick <laughs> at the time. And I said to Mark Asquith, who is at the time, I'm the general manager of the Silver Snail in Toronto. I said, what's the deal? I mean, I thought it was a scam that they had done this. And at the time, there were very few comics like that. There's Dave Sims, Cerberus, and, you know, some kind of other very independent uh, comics, but not the black and white boom. So I was very skeptical about it. And mm-hmm. uh, Mark said, oh, you got to buy it. It's, it's really good. And it will remind you of Frank Miller. And I just mm-hmm. looked at him like, what? There's no way. So I picked it up. I looked at it. And I said out loud, this is never going to work. <laughs> and I did not buy it. Oh, no. Yeah. So I, I, I later went back. Ending. I went back and bought one. Oh, you did? Um, but I, I have no idea where it is. And I never <sighs> bought number two. I never bought any of the ones after it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's true. And so 2008, uh, I work. I work. Uh, I'm, all, I'm a high school teacher by day, but. I work with a guy named Mark Hussey, and he's kind of a post-production wizard and a music guy. And he and I were just kind of getting these ideas about working in the industry. And I'm normally a screenwriter and directing stuff. And he said, uh, you know, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And we were coming up with different projects. And we ended up working with this Isaac Elliott Fisher. And Isaac approached us after one of our projects was wrapped. And he said, do you guys want to do a documentary on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I said, oh, God, here we go again. I said, no. <laughs> and, but, you know, you think I would have learned my lesson, right? <laughs> but I said, no. And I said, no, because I thought there's no way that, that we'll be allowed to do it. Like, it's just too big. And I told him that. This, it's too big. Mm-hmm. And um, my partner said, at the exact same time that I said no, Mark Hussey said, oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, wait, what are you doing? And then I paused and I thought, well, just wait, there is this big niche market. And we had just been talking about how niche markets are so, you know, you don't need to have the same number of fans if you're an independent filmmaker or an independent musician or whatever, right? You mm-hmm. you get a certain number of fans and you put out good work and you, you have a base that buys your stuff and you, it's good. So then I said, yeah, you're right. We should look at it. And so I asked Isaac what he was doing. And he said, well, I have an email that I'm going to send to Mirage. And he had the name of Gary Richardson, who is the CEO of Mirage, who worked with Peter Laird. Mm -hmm. So I called. I said, don't send the email. You know, as much as Isaac's super talented and super hard worker, you know, he's not necessarily going to write an email that's not going to sound like a fan email. You know what I mean? (laughs) So... And I, to be fair, it wasn't like his email was terrible or anything, but he's, you know, he's a young guy and he's uh, a camera guy and he's a fan. So he's going to have a certain amount of, you know, a different approach than I would have as a an old bugger in my 40s sending an email. So I sent an email that was a little bit 
you know, of a prep for a phone call. Uh, mm-hmm. And I followed up the email immediately with a phone call. And I got Gary on the phone. Like, he actually answered his phone. Oh, wow. Yeah, which I don't, like, maybe that's the pattern there. You know, I don't yeah. have a clue. But anyway, he says, uh, uh, you know, I think it's a great idea and it's cool, but I can't say you're going to have to call so-and-so at Four Kids. They're managing the license. And if you know Four Kids, they were doing the series at the time, yep. Yep. the animated series. And, uh, you know, I, I said, sure, I'll call anybody. And I, I was heartened, actually. I thought, wow, this, this is better than I thought. Like, I thought he would just say, no, 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 there are five people doing the documentary, and there's this and there's that. But he said, no, there's, you know, there's just this one call to make. So I called her, left a message with the woman there, and she basically uh, came back and said, uh, it looks like if you want to make this documentary, we can't stop you. And that kind of was the word. Wow. Like you can make you can make a documentary on something, right? And so I looked into the fair use rules, and yeah, we could make a documentary. We could do this. I mean, we can't obviously show everything that you might want to show necessarily, but we can make this documentary. So I contacted Gary again, and I said, "This is what she said," and he said, "Yeah, I got the same the same idea." And I said, "Are you interested in cooperating with us?" And he said, "Well." you know what, we aren't going to get behind. And I think he thought I was asking for money and I wasn't. He said, uh, we can't, uh, we can't support it, but we won't try to stop you. And we wish you the best of luck. So I, I, you know, thanks very much. And the first thing that happened was Isaac Elliott Fisher goes down to the New York comic con. Um, and while he's there, he bumps into Peter Laird and he interviews Peter. And I'd been talking to people at Mirage and, you know, some people at Mirage were very helpful and saying, yeah, 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 we've talked to Gary and, you know, we can help you find this or that. And so they were really being very agreeable and talking to us. And Peter was very agreeable and Isaac met uh, him and everything seemed great. And then he met Kevin and Kevin also was really supportive. And Kevin said, oh, I think it sounds like a great project. And, you know, you got to come and talk to me in L.A. So mm-hmm. Isaac contacts me from New York and says, you got to call Kevin Eastman. He's interested in us interviewing him. So I'm a high school teacher. I call up Kevin and I say, look, Kevin, I've got a a holiday coming up called the March break. It's a spring break. Um, What if we came to L.A.? And he said, yeah, that'd be great. Come on down. And I said, "Okay, can you recommend a good place so I could stay that's not too far away from where you are to interview you and that? And he said, "Ah, well, you could stay in my house. (laughs) <laughs> I said, well, what? He said, yeah, I have I have an abandoned house, is what he said. Or not abandoned. No, that's a stupid way to say it. A uh, house for sale. Okay. And he said, you can come to my house that I have for sale, and you can stay there. And I thought, oh, my God, well, this is amazing. So, <laughs> by the way, we hit it off over the phone, I should say. It's not like he first phone call or anything. Right. We, had a few, we had a few chats. <laughs> and if you've met Kevin, you know, he is literally the nicest guy. And he was so kind and so generous. And he said, yeah, 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 stay in the place. So, you know, we had Kevin agreeing to that. And we made a, a few calls and we ended up getting in touch with the Henson company and Brian Henson's people. And Brian Henson agreed to talk to us that week, which was going to be be amazing. And Isaac Elliott Fisher, who had a great idea, uh, got a hold of Pat Fraley, who was the voice of Krang in the series, the Fred Wolf series. Mm -hmm. And with Pat Fraley, he started working on getting the voice cast together for a reunion, their first reunion in X number of years, right? So this was really, really interesting. And it was enough to get, you know, once we had that, we started to think, wait a minute, this is really getting interesting. And <laughs> if you remember a show called The Totally Rad Show, I don't know if you ever watched that on Revision 3. Uh, we had those guys come out to the house, and we had Brian Tochi come to the house. Oh, and wow. yeah. yeah, a bunch of people. And by coincidence, Brian Tochi and I have a common friend, Michael Miller in L.A., a, a really <laughs> good friend of mine, a super nice guy. So just a freaky coincidence. And <laughs> it all folded together, and, and they showed up. You know, James Avery came, and, like, everybody showed up. Rob and Townsend and, and you name it, they were all there. Cam and mm-hmm. so. 
I would say, yeah, I would say it was it was really surprising for them to come and see what we were like. Basically, wait a minute, this is like just just a few guys, yeah. you know? Yeah, <laughs> this isn't what we thought it was going to be, and we were really nice guys, and we're you know decent Canadian fellows, and this, the story is true. <laughs> Canadians are the nicest people in the world. We'll just ask us, we'll be the first to tell you. <laughs> and uh, we were very agreeable and kind to everybody. And at one point, um, you know, there, there was a little bit of suspicion, I think, when they came in and saw this ab kind of abandoned looking place <laughs> up in this gated community. But we talked them through it. And we had a guy, a fan helping us named uh, Stefan Reese, who's well known in the community. And he was there and he was, I think, finding it thrilling to be involved, too, and help us out and, and we were sure happy to to meet him and it was just really it was really good and, and I'll tell you what when we went to Henson Studios like that's when I first as I say I had this realization like wait a minute this is not normal like this is things are changing here so, something special is going on here <laughs> that's right it, it, like there's Brian Henson we're interviewing him and you know we're good at our jobs it's like I, I am a high school teacher by day but I mean, I, I'm good at what I'm doing, and I'm comfortable with it. And, you know, the last documentary that Mark had, and I had worked on was a documentary about Canada's soldiers in Afghanistan. So, like, we're oh, wow. we're pro, yeah, we're pro enough to do what we need to do. But it was just a matter of, and I don't say that arrogantly. I mean, it's just a certain skill set, right? You just learn your skills and you do them. So right. being at the Hensons there, it's really, you start to say, okay, this is this is working. And when we got at home, we were kind of on a high, like, wow, this, this is happening. And I got a phone call from Kevin, and he said, yeah, there's a guy that uh, I know named Galen Walker, and he's a, a producer out here, and he really wants to talk to you. So huh. I found out who Galen Walker was. He had worked on the 2007 feature. Ah, yes. Yeah, he produced it. So I contacted him, left a message. He called me back. We kind of got chatting back and forth. And he said, I'd really like to talk to you guys. Are you going to be out here again? I said, oh, I wish. <laughs> like that was kind of a once in a lifetime thing. So I thought. So <laughs> a certain amount of time, and I know this story is going to feel long, but a certain amount of time goes by not too long. And it looked like, the, there was going to be some interviewing with Peter again mm -hmm. and with Ryan Brown and Isaac, Elliot Fisher, my partner, Mark Hussey, and Mark's wife, who is to work in stills, Sarah Hussey, she joined the guys and they went down uh, to Northampton and they went to Ohio and they went to some other places. They went to, I think they interviewed, um, oh, no, no, that wasn't Michelle. Um, Isaac had already talked to Michelle Ivy another time and talked oh, okay. to her about her collection. That. Yeah. And they talked to Eli or Elias Derby. Mm -hmm. he, he, yeah. They talked to him about his collection. And so they had some nice interviews with Peter and that. And I got a call from Gary Richardson. And I guess once we'd kind of shown ourselves to be really, you know, professional, it wasn't just like a group of guys who are kind of eager to meet people or whatever. Right. Gary, Gary called and said, hey, are you guys coming to New York for Tribeca? And I said, uh, well, we can. <laughs> he said, would you be interested in shooting for us, for our, our, our company, for our, our um, 25th anniversary celebration, basically? Ah. And I said, oh, totally. So we ended up working with their PR firm, which was a company called Peppercom, and we shot their... Uh, 25th anniversary stuff and it went on Peppercoms and Mirage's website for the 25th anniversary and of course when we were down there because we we're with Peppercom and we're with the people from Mirage all of a sudden we're in at four kids and we get all the interviews with everybody at four kids and we're with Steve Barron and we we'd already shot some stuff with Steve Barron we had hired actually funny enough his son to shoot an interview with him and his son is a documentary filmmaker and a filmmaker. And so we met Steve and, you know, there was Kevin there and we, we knew Kevin and we we're friendly with Kevin from hanging out with him in LA. And mm -hmm. it just, we kind of got on the inside of the situation and we realized that we were in a really nice position to do this, right? We could, 
we could do something special here at this point. And we were shooting, like as I say, we're shooting from the inside. We're no longer feeling like, you know, we're annoying everybody or, mm -hmm. or we're the guys mm -hmm. who are on the outside trying to show up and bustle our way in through the doors, you know? And from that point on, uh, we were friends with Galen and Galen took us aside and said, look, I, I think there may be some interest in this documentary down the road. And there was a guy there with him named Scott Mednick and, and they kind of secretly let us know that there was something brewing with a turtle reboot coming mm. and keep our eyes peeled and our documentary might be of interest. And, you know, we talked over the years, we dealt with them and talked to them for, you know, all through the stuff happening that, so, uh, what we ended up that, that summer, 2009 feeling like, you know, there was maybe some stuff brewing. We didn't know about the sale at that point. I should say we, mm -hmm. we knew that something was, was up with the planning of a feature film, but we didn't know exactly what. Really? Okay. Yeah. And Peppercom hired us again. Well, hired us they don't hire us what like we were never paid to do it they they said you know you can have access to this and that and we'll help you with your expenses to come down and shoot some more stuff and get give us some footage and let us put it on the website so we're like yeah yeah no problem yeah that's so, a good trade yeah. yeah yeah and then we keep the footage that was the deal so we go to comic-con 2009 and our first time at comic-con and it's of course it's a mind blower and mm -hmm. again you really feel like I can't stress enough, like, man, we're on the inside of this thing. <laughs> and it, it was interesting. And by now, you know, I started by saying I didn't know much about the turtles because I was too old. But now I know all about the turtles and I know all about the people. And yeah. Yeah. And I'm a fan and I'm thinking this is awesome. And the people are, are really great. And, you know, you love Peter and you love Kevin and Gary and everybody you meet. And Galen and Scott are such great guys. And we meet them at Comic-Con and just, there's this real sense that my god like we're with steve varner and he's showing us the first turtle sculpt that he did by hand and <laughs> you know we're at we're at john handy's place and he's the marketing or not the marketing guy he was a, a vp and he was the action figure guy mm -hmm. with carl aronian at playmates and so we're at his place up in uh it's up north uh, monterey in california there and we're at his place and he's showing us all his documents and all his original designs. And he says, yeah, yeah, I can let you get copies of this stuff and you can shoot it all. So we got all that and oh, wow. got his story and he's a great interview. And, you know, <laughs> we came back to L.A. and there was a tryout thing down at the Walk of Fame where, where uh, yeah. Scott and Galen had, yeah, set up this. Remember that. You could try out, be a member of the Foot Clan. And, yeah. We're there, and we shot all that tryout. A thousand people showing up to do that, and is so Ernie we, Ray we Jr. shot was all that. that and Kevin he? did a sign. In. What's that? Wasn't uh, Ernie Ray Jr. there for that? We met Ernie Ray Jr. <laughs> we had already, we already knew him from from Tribeca. We uh -huh. we got friendly with Ernie. We shot an interview with Ernie then, but we hung out with Ernie there, and you, you know the guys from the American Kickboxing Academy and. Guys and girls. I mean, I'm, there were every, everybody, you know, both sexes, of course. So we we just, we came home from that thinking, okay, we've got a film, and this is going to happen. Remember, this is summer 2009, mm -hmm. and, and you can see where we are now. So yeah. when we came home, uh, we thought, well, we'll start cutting some stuff or maybe putting something together, and we put together a teaser, and that's the earliest teaser that you might have seen online. Yeah. yep. And then we found out about the sale, mm. and we thought, what does this mean? Like, what could this possibly suggest? And I didn't know. Uh, and I was actually in contact with Nickelodeon uh, a fair bit around, uh, I, I, within, I say, a year or two after that, just trying to set up for more interviews at Comic-Con and all this kind of stuff. And I don't think they 100% knew exactly what was going to happen with mm -hmm. us or how mm -hmm. things were going to go. So, you know, they were never really sure, like, they wanted to talk to me about this or that. And I totally get that, right? Like, they were trying to plan their 
series, which we now know their animated series, and mm -hmm. there was a lot of stuff brewing there. Oh yeah. But but we had enough information to keep shooting all the time, and so we did. We shot and we shot every chance we got, and we kept working at it and kept calling people, kept talking. We stayed friendly with Kevin and stayed friendly with Peter. We shot some more stuff with them. And so it ends up that most, I would say, m most of the latest stuff that we got was this summer of 2012. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got a phone call one day. Or no, let me back up. I got an email. And the email was so mysterious. Uh, I mean, I won't tell you the whole story of it, but I got a very mysterious email. And in the email, it said, call this guy, Gary Proper. So I called Gary Proper, and he said that he had never sent me an email. And it was really strange. And the email basically said, call me. I have information for you. And then I called him. I spoke to him. And he did have information for me. And that information got me in touch with a guy named Bobby Herbeck. And Bobby Herbeck wrote mm -hmm. the first draft of the first Turtle movie. Mm -hmm. And it got me in touch with a guy named Tom Gray. And Tom Gray was the producer of all four Turtle movies. Yeah. So we ended up wow. last summer at Tom's Tom Gray's house and hanging out with Bobby Herbeck and communicating with them and getting a lot of really, truly insider stuff. And all of a sudden, our documentary was really in-depth. <laughs> like, stuff that no one has ever heard. And that was really interesting. And we started to think, hang on, this is even bigger than we thought. We're yeah. up over 90 interviews. We've got stuff that nobody's ever seen. We've got Peter's archives. We've got Kevin's archives. We've got stuff from the Henson's history. Like, we've got Kevin Clash. We interviewed him. Isaac went down and got him in New York. It was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's when I started making calls to companies and saying, okay, this is, this is really big. Yeah. And Gail and, and Scott had a deal with us that they were going to represent us up until November. And then November went by and Paramount was still working away and things were just kind of brewing. And I thought, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this documentary. So, right now, I'll tell you this. We have talked to people at Henson, and they saw some stuff, and they really liked it. We've talked to Peter. He's seen some stuff, and he really likes it. We've talked to Kevin. He's seen some stuff, and he really likes it. We've talked to some people at other companies. They've seen some stuff, and they really like it. And we don't know any more than that. Yeah. We've got a 95-minute cut of the documentary oh, wow. that just got recut this morning. Oh, wow. And I wish I could show it to you. It <laughs> is really good. It's Some of it is amazing. And, man, I'll tell you what. Stuff we're cutting would make you cry oh, if I, you're a fan. I can't, I can't even imagine. I can't yeah. imagine. You've got so much... Like as you as you're telling the story, I'm like I'm starting to calculate in my head. I'm like, that's insane. What? Yeah, what you're cutting? I mean, you're going like in my mind. I'm going if if I'm these guys, in, instead of going from a uh, you know a, a, an hour and a half to two hour documentary, I'm thinking like box set. You know. Okay. Well, <laughs> let me tell you this. It's it's there. If if somebody ever said to us. Hey, could you make a collector's edition? I would say, come here, follow me. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. You, you wouldn't believe it. Like, we've got stuff that, like, I don't even want to say, but I will say this. <laughs> we've got stuff that would make, you could almost see the whole, um, the whole history of the turtles in just still shots, alt scenes, and deleted scenes. Oh, wow, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like the very first designs of characters that you know and love. The very first drawing. We've got footage. I'll tell you one thing. We've got footage of Peter saying, 
uh, yeah, look at this guy. He looks pretty cool. And you can hear Kevin going, yeah, that's pretty cool. And it might be Bebop or Rocksteady, the very first. Oh, goodness. The very yeah, first idea of Bebop. <laughs> 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 that is uh, insane. See, we, I, I didn't even tell you this. We also ended up at Fred Wolf's place. Yeah. And you saw that in the podcast. Yeah, that was, that was, that was pretty clever. With the uh, oh, we're we're looking for this place. It's uh, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> well, Fred turns out to be just the nicest guy, and we hit it off like crazy. And by the way, how often does Fred Wolf take you out for Mexican food? <laughs> Fred, you know he he was so excited to show us some cells and to you know. Like the whole thing, you, you yeah. it's crazy. And we went to David Wise's place yeah. and we got his perspective. And I mean, it, it's just, it's crazy. You know, you get your fingers on stuff that Turtle fans would just lose it over. I, yeah, because that that is a serious, uh, there's a serious lack of behind the scenes, uh, you know, Turtles history stuff. Uh, you know, the, the movies have always kind of been lacking in bonus material. Uh, same thing with the, uh, the animated series that have been released. There really hasn't been this, this, this footage, this, mm-hmm. which we all know is, has been, you know, done, but, and is, mm-hmm. and has been sitting in somebody's closet or on a shelf for, you know, who knows how long, but, uh, the, just the, the idea that you guys have been able to access this stuff is mind-blowing well the uh, the stuff we've seen <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> th- here's a good story this is a this is a really this is a classic and i, I tell the story not to make fun of anybody like <laughs> isaac elliott fisher i by the way i ride him mercilessly so don't think i don't but we were at Golden Apple in L.A., and we're at the signing with Kevin, and there are, you know, lots of fans there, and Kevin's family, and just a bunch of people. It's a very happy crew, and and we've been hanging around enough that people know who we are, and the guys driving the turtle van know us, and, you know, it's it's a real relaxed atmosphere. So we are working, but we're also super relaxed. And a girl comes up to Isaac. And she says something about the t- turtles and Peter Laird. And he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she says, yeah, he's my dad. And she he, and Isaac goes, yeah, yeah, right. There sure she is. Sure he is. <laughs> well, it's Emily Laird. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and she's there with some friends. And she's a fan. Like, she's a big turtle fan. Obviously, they're like her brothers, right? Yeah. So she's really... I don't know. He just kind of passes. Yeah, yeah, sure you are. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and she kind of walks away. And then I guess somebody says something to him like, she really is. And, you know, he can't run over fast enough. Oh, and, my oh Apologies. And, you know, we get to know her a little bit, too. And, of course, she's just the nicest girl. But hilarious that you never know who you're going to meet. Like, you just have no idea. <sighs> wow. That is, right? you can't that predict. is amazing. You'll be in a, in a room of people. It is amazing. Yeah. It, you'll be in a room and someone will say, Oh, so and so, you know, he's a giant turtle fan, or or you, you you know, you stop in a Starbucks and you just kind of make conversation. Someone says, "So, what are you guys doing in town?" Oh, we're making a documentary on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you're ready for a laugh, and they go, somebody will roll up their sleeve, and there's you know Donatello on their <laughs> shoulder. So, you're kidding! <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, it's been really great that way. Please, please, uh-huh. a moment to reflect. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so we're actually going to uh, pause the interview right here. Um, this interview is just so chock full of information that uh, decided to split it over two episodes. Uh, part two of this episode, we're only halfway through, folks. Uh, there is, I mean, you think you've heard some some awesome stuff so far? Just wait until part two. Uh, so we'll have part two uh, at the beginning of next episode, along with our character spotlights and our fan feedback. Make sure you come to our official website, www.turtlepowerpodcast.com. You can follow us on Twitter for all the latest news. That's at TMNT Podcast. You can follow myself 
at Figdon Pat. You can follow Alex at A Rodriguez 2005. You can follow Darby at Lobo DTP. You can uh, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Turtle Power Podcast. And you can uh, share your feedback with us uh, via old fashioned email at uh, Turtle Power Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you have a chance, uh, uh, go ahead and subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And uh, thanks again for listening. We've got uh, the song of the show is going to be Black Betty by Big City Rock. And that's uh, one of my favorite songs from the TMNT music from the motion picture uh, soundtrack. So thanks again, and we'll uh, talk to you next time.